This week on Outdoor Oklahoma, we learn of one family's unbelievable connection to one of our oldest wildlife management areas. Then we take a look at a brand new education program that aims to give high schoolers more of a challenge right now. Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. In 2019, the Wildlife Department partnered with some archery industry leaders to create a brand new education program for older high school students. It's called Varsity Archery. And we were there during the program's first state shoot in Tulsa. But first, we traveled to far northeast Oklahoma, about 30 minutes south of Grand Lake, to the Spavanaugh Wildlife Management Area. Purchased in 1926, Spavanaw is one of our oldest WMAs in the state. Not only that, but back in the early 90s, it also began hosting one of the department's very first youth-controlled deer hunts. And over the years, there's been one family name that's been a part of this beautiful area from before the state even purchased the property up to the present day. For wildlife technician Tony Crawford, who lives on the area with his family, Spavanaugh WMA is more than just where he works. It's his own family's heritage. Well, my grandfather grew up on this place uh, back in the early 1920s. Uh, actually, about the same time, the area started getting bought up. Uh, the Department of Wildlife started buying the property up in 1926. So it actually was established in 1944 as actually a state game refuge. My husband grew up over in Black Holler, and uh, he walked to Kenwood every day to school. And He'd always, when we have time, we always come back over here and look it over because he said, oh, I just love it over here. Dad, he, he would always tell me about this area over here that, you know, like most of the people back in, they said, well, we had to walk a mile or two miles in the snow just to get to school. And if you go down Black Holler and where they grew up at and, and you kind of take the route that they went to the school, and if they had to walk in the snow, they had a long walk. It's possible, but we're not for, for certain that, uh, that my grandfather's uh, family did sell the property to the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife. Well, one of the cool things, they used to have uh, what, they, what they used to call woodplot programs, and that's what I did with my dad and my grandpa. Actually, even my grandpa here, too. Learned to stack a lot of timber out here, a lot of brush, cut wood, split, you name it, get it all hauled. As soon as I, told them the, I became an intern, they were just excited there. And I got to understand what the Department of Wildlife did then. And then when I got the chance to do an interview, that's when I was like, I'm, I'm got, I got my feet wet, this could happen, so. Tony first told me he got this job, it kinda, you know, it's probably a highlight of my life. What do you think he thought about his grandson now living here on the same property he grew up on? Yeah, he, he thought it pretty awesome. But, he, uh, but that was the year he got so sick too, and so. The uh, Spavanaugh WMA is about 12 miles southwest of Jay. It's about 14,300 acres. Uh, it's separated into two units. The uh, game management area is about a little over 12,000 acres. 
the uh, public hunting area is a little about 2,000 acres. We have actually three controlled hunts, actually four really if you say it right. Uh, there's actually an adult hunt, it's adult rifle, one's either sex and one is uh, antlers only. And we do that actually on one weekend. And then we have a youth muzzleloader on another weekend. And then our final one is a youth rifle. On the, uh, the youth rifle, actually both the youth muzzleloader and youth rifle, uh, my dad, my, my family, they donate hats to the uh, youth kids. And we've been actually doing it since about 2004. You know, when my dad passed away, he, he called me one day, he said, Dad, what do you think about his youth hunt by honoring Grandpa by giving beanies or caps to the kids, you know, with my dad's name on it in memory of Opie? And I said, well, that sounded like a good idea. Well, they name it after my husband, Opie, and so I, it uh, seems like I just felt like I needed to do something for the youth, so I started buying gifts and giving them away on the youth hunt. I think I might have missed one year. And, and enjoy it every year. We live in Claymore. He works. Oklahoma. Catch him, Oklahoma. When you are my lucky? So all my kids, all, well, my boys was all hunters, and I like to go hunting. And I just like to do things for people. And they, and the kids enjoy it, and I enjoy it. And I don't know how many more years I'm going to make it over here. And I'll be 91 years old in about three weeks. So. Heath and Raker, who was on the, uh, the uh, controlled hunt last year, uh, Heath's wife, uh, Jimmy Lynn, is actually a really good friend of my wife's. So we've always kept in touch over the years and since our boys are old enough now to come on the control hunts, we keep more in touch. On that hunt for them, they kind of had a little dry spell the first two days, Friday afternoon and Saturday morning. And then Saturday afternoon, down in what we call the Reno area, we actually had a few hunters come in and say, hey, we're seeing deer down there running around, chasing, and we're tagged out, so why don't you go down there and try it? Not an hour later, we hear a gunshot, and we're like, no, this can't be, there's no way. Sure enough, Heath rattled up a buck for him, dropped him, and it was just, you could tell the excitement from all the way from up here. We, we knew it was them. Deer did die, hit, hit, died in the road, really close to the road, and usually it goes opposite direction and downhill because this area is at the edge of the Ozark Hills. So usually it goes down at the bottom and you've got to drag it uphill. So they were pretty fortunate to have their deer die at the edge of the road, so. Okay. Yay. <laughs> That's awesome, brother. Good job. Ooh. Ooh. Good job, buddy. Dear Lord, we just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for all the wonderful things you've created for us, Lord. Thank you for the time we get to spend with each other out in your wonderful outdoors. Lord, thank you for this critter and the experience and the fact that you'll provide for our family, Lord. We just want to say thank you so much for everything you do for us. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
That's awesome, brother. He's in the road. In the road. This giant place. And he lands in the road. One of the unique things about the Spavanaugh Wildlife Management Area, it's actually at the edge of the Ozark Flint Hills. So, I mean, if you like to go up and down, get your exercise, these hills will, will get you in, the exercise, in shape. Uh, and plus, it's just, it's pretty country. And back and say, originally this area was, was, was a oak pine savanna. And that's one of the main things we're trying to focus on on the habitat is trying to get it back to that, that type of habitat. One of the, the greatest things with this job is actually to live on the area. Uh, and plus with my kids getting to grow up here, it's a 14,000 acre backyard, as, as my son says. And I mean, they go out and tromp around and now we've got a horse, so now they're actually out, out there riding when they can be riding. But it's pretty cool to, to see that, like I said, several generations, we're actually gonna be on this area. Pretty much as my kids, as they grew up here, they're actually understanding it more that they actually, it's a pretty unique opportunity to grow up on a wildlife management area. If I, if I went into coaching and teaching, my life would have been totally different. It's, I'd have been focused on that instead of my passion. So I knew when I actually grew up with my dad out here cutting wood plot programs, I had the passion to be outside. So this, this was just what I fell in love with. Now we never thought Tony would be involved in this here. I thought he'd end up being a coach like me, but I'm, I'm glad he went in this direction. And, uh, and him being a part of this kind of, you know, adds a Crawford name back in here. I'm gonna say it's a blessing to have Tony down here and as a family member. And uh, I just hope he continues till, probably till I'm gone, maybe. You know, it's hard to think about Spavanaugh WMA without thinking about its inseparable connection to the Crawford family. If you've never been to Spavanaugh, well, you owe it to you and your family to plan a visit to this incredibly beautiful corner of our state. And who knows, Tony may even have time to point you towards Black Holler, where his grandpa grew up. The Varsity Archery Program first began in Oklahoma in 2019 after coaches and parents saw a need for kids who were wanting more of a challenge. And by the looks of the first state tournament that included varsity archery, well, let's just say it hit the bullseye. In 2019, the Wildlife Department unveiled a brand new archery program for public schools. The varsity archery program was birthed out of a need to provide high schoolers a more advanced opportunity beyond the incredibly successful Oklahoma National Archery in the Schools program. Our education coordinators worked hand in hand with industry leaders to create a pilot program. 35 Oklahoma schools with a total of just over 500 high schoolers were invited to be a part of the first year and the first state shoot in 2020 that included varsity archery was a huge success. I was a National Archery Schools coordinator for two different states and we always had coaches asking us, you know, well, how do we take the kids to the next steps? How do we teach them how to learn this equipment without them having to go out and purchase a lot of equipment on their own initially and they not understanding how it fits or buying the wrong equipment. So Dale Morrell from Morrell Targets and I were talking about that a long time ago and he's decided he had an idea <laughs> to come up with a system that was just as universal as a Genesis bow, but was going to give these kids the next step, what they needed to learn. And so, as you can tell here with your program, we've had a lot, your coaches asking us that same question. They're really interested in what you're doing because they have these kids. NASP is a great program, takes them so far, but they need, they're hungry for more. And if we can give them more information, it'll make them better archers and help convert them to target archers and, and hunters out there in the field. We're really fortunate to be able to see both sides of the fence and talk to the dealers and then the coordinators and kind of over the years we've kind of come to realize that maybe that we need to do something to step up and try to take the kids on further with their archery experience. And we chose the Gen X because of the poundage rating on that bow and it actually has a draw stop capability too as well. So it allows a student to learn in the classroom and actually uh, on a bow that could be legal to go out in the field and go hunting with. So what we tried to do is make this bow as easy to use as a bare Genesis bow by uh, creating some uh, training tools and some fitting tools with it and try not to use a lot of tools or wrenches involved in adjusting the bow. So we've uh, eliminated the need to change modules and draw length. We eliminated the need to move peep sights up and down. Uh, the fitting tools allow an archer to practice before they actually put a bow in their hand with the release 
and we tried to make everything non-tool adjustable. So the only thing you need a wrench for is the limb bolts for the poundage. Everything else you can do by hand. So it makes it really easy in that classroom environment for a teacher to change mode between students. And the other thing we did with that is it's everything is uh, recordable. So every thing that you need to fit the bow has a, a number on it. So that once you fitted it one time to a student, they know their six digit code and they're able to grab any bow off the rack and go out and use that and fit it to themselves. My brother, he started working on it and he developed a whole system with a bow and a sight and release and everything that makes it uh, universal. One bow will fit everybody. And so what it does is give a teacher an advantage where they don't have to uh, try to move peep sights and, and set up uh, bowls like a professional archer would be set up. But the way the equipment is set up, it makes it universal for everybody. It's really easy. It's a uh, six-digit code. Once we establish a six-digit code, that kid has it for life or until he grows out and grows the bow. And it's, uh, it's really easy. Uh, we, we use it in several different programs. Well, you guys asked us to help you design a target that was a little simulated more of a hunting situation. And any other shoot that you go out to in the world, not everybody's shooting at the exact same bullseye, so you're not putting that many arrows into that bullseye. So we helped you develop a, a target where each archer is shooting at their own turkey down there. And as you'll notice, you, the scoring rings are there, but they're very difficult to see at distance. And we're trying to do that on purpose to help you simulate more of a hunting situation to teach the kids where to aim. If they are in that, out in the field hunting turkeys, they're gonna have a better idea of where to aim to harvest that turkey. There is a decline in, in hunting and fishing, and, and it's mostly due to, I think, opportunity and knowledge. And so in these urban environments, the kids don't get that exposure to this. So this not only exposes them to archery, but we start moving them down that path and start exposing them to hunting and target archery and all those things that they're gonna to wanna to do out there. So that's that was our ultimate goal, is basically, bottom line, create hunters and archers. I mean, once they learn the basic skills, you know, NAS takes them in the real basic shooting skills and we're teaching them the sight, rest, and release. And we want to move those along to collegiate programs, to the local archery shop, to the local Joad clubs, use, you know, field archery association shoots. We, I, they need to be involved with the other parts of the community and seek out other coaches and other shooting opportunities. They're out there. If they do a little look, looking for them, they'll find a lot of other shooting opportunities out there for them. And I, it, this is a lifelong sport. Yeah. They can do this, you know, I'm, I'm 60, they're in the fourth grade and they can do this forever. Oklahoma is going to lead the United States, I think, in the program. And, uh, but it's, uh, it's just something that uh, trains these kids to, to have something to hunt with or to shoot 3D tournaments with. The bow we use now is, a, is a, goes up to 40 pounds and from 25 to 40 pounds. So they give the kids the advantage to find a mentor and go out and, and have them to take them into the woods and uh, hopefully that's what it accomplished, you know, and on the flip side of the coin is it, it'll stimulate the economy for the archery industry as a whole. You know, it's not necessarily about morale targets, it's, it's, it's for the bow companies, the sight companies, the stabilizer companies. Everybody in the industry should benefit from it. In the long run of the thing, it should be a great program for archery in general. From controlled deer hunts to archery programs in the school and everything in between, there are so many opportunities to get your kids involved in our tremendous outdoor heritage. To learn more, go to wildlifedepartment.com backslash education. For everyone at your wildlife department, including the extended Crawford family, I'm Todd Craighead and we'll see you right back here next time on Outdoor Oklahoma. If you're into the outdoors, the Wildlife Department has a brand new opportunity this year that you're going to love. Introducing the Outdoor Oklahoma Adventures Raffle Program. 14 separate raffles will be given away for some incredible experiences, like a fishing trip with Jimmy Houston, a duck hunt with Major League Baseball pitcher Archie Bradley, a private day spent with our bear biologist, and a whole slew of guided hunting and fishing trips and other unique experiences. The $10 tickets are on sale now through August 6th at GoOutdoorsOklahoma.com. Help support fish and wildlife conservation and get ready for adventure. Always do the right thing. Hi, my name is Elizabeth, and this message is for moms, dads, and grandparents. This is a toy. These are not. If you have children and as a family decide to allow them to operate an ATV, first make sure that they ride the right size ATV for their age. Always follow the manufacturer's minimum age recommendation warning label 
found on the ATV. Have them wear a DOT compliant helmet, goggles, long sleeves, long pants, over the ankle boots, and gloves. Always supervise riders under the age of 16. And remember, you control the keys. Always do the right thing. To learn more about the eight golden rules of ATV safety and how to enroll in the hands-on ATV rider course and free online e-course, visit atvsafety.org. Fishing. Hunting. Wildlife management. Resource protection. Habitat conservation. Public outreach. And education. It's what we do. It's what we live for. Simply put, Conserving wildlife literally means the wise use of wildlife. And that's at the root of everything we do. Oklahoma is one of the most species diverse states in the nation. Making sure opportunities exist for hunters, anglers, and all those who appreciate wildlife is not only our job. It's our passion. We are your Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation. From sunup to sundown, and sometimes all night long. The employees of our agency are relentless in their dedication to a job well done. The science behind wildlife conservation is constantly evolving. And our biologists are leading the way with groundbreaking and cutting-edge techniques that the entire scientific community benefits from. If that's not enough to make you proud, then consider this. We've been doing all this since our agency's birth in 1909 without using a dime of taxpayer money. That's because the Wildlife Department is designed as a user-pay, user-benefit agency. It's sportsmen and wildlife enthusiasts who pay the bill for wildlife conservation in Oklahoma. Revenue from the sale of hunting and fishing licenses make up the majority of the agency's budget. There's also another unique way that outdoorsmen contribute financially. Each time someone buys a gun, ammunition, fishing equipment, or fuel for their boat, a small portion of the tax they pay at the register is used for wildlife conservation. But hunters and anglers don't just contribute financially. A long time ago, we recognized that sportsmen are our most effective management tool. Shaping regulations and making sure everyone complies to them has played a major role in bringing many species back from the brink of extinction to unimaginable numbers As much as the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation has accomplished, we are positive our agency's best days are yet to come. You can see it on our faces. You can feel it with your hands. And you can hear it on the landscape. You'll find us working hard to make your state's natural resources the most healthy in the land. We are. We are. We are. 
We are your Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation. Thank you.